A particle in a well of finite height. Now we will consider what happens if we change the boundary condition that the potential energy is infinite outside the box to finite outside the box. If the total energy of the particle well system is less than u, less than the potential energy uh, outside the box, then the particle will be trapped inside the well. Now, if the total energy is less than the potential energy for this particle, the solutions we will get are called bound states because they correspond to the particle trapped inside the box. Classically, what happens? Classically, the particle is trapped and it cannot penetrate these boundaries. Quantum mechanically, we will see that the probability uh, of finding the uh, particle inside the barrier will be non-zero. So this will be a surprising result. Now, if I write Schrodinger's equation for this new potential landscape minus h bar squared divided by 2m second derivative of the wave function d squared psi dx squared again i'm considering one dimensional case plus the potential energy times psi is equal to energy total energy times psi so this gives me the following differential equation for the wave function second derivative of the wave function with respect to position is 2m over h bar squared 2m over h bar squared um, so if you take this u to the right hand side it will be e minus u but with this minus sign it becomes u minus e u minus e times psi okay so this is our uh, Schrodinger's equation. So this is basically valid in the regions 1 and 3. So where we have a non-zero potential energy U. So this gives me uh, d squared psi dx squared is equal to now I'm going to call this prefactor c square, uh, c square times psi, where c square is 2m u minus e divided by h bar squared. Now to solve this differential equation, I have to find the characteristic equation. Now the characteristic equation is d squared dx squared minus c squared applied to psi. So let me note that here. d squared dx squared minus c squared times psi is equal to zero. So characteristic equation is m squared minus c squared c squared equals to zero, which gives me a solution m is plus or minus c that means the solutions are of the form psi of x is a times e to the c x plus b times e to the minus c x exponential increase or exponential decay in the regions one and three so that is the mathematical solution now we have a requirement as x goes to infinity in region three the wave function must vanish. Psi of x should go to zero. This was a requirement for solutions of Schrodinger's equation, which tells us that the solution in the region number three, uh, it already decays to zero for this term, but this term blows up. So this a will be zero in that region. So I should have a solution of this form, b times e to the minus cx in region one as x goes to minus infinity the wave function must go to zero which means in region one the ex ex acceptable solution is a e to the cx okay so these solutions are uh, valid 
if uh, I have the wave function decaying to zero at the extreme limits, x equals plus or minus infinity, and that is satisfied by this type of solution in region 3 and this type of solution in region 1. In region 2, what happens? In region 2, the potential energy is zero. We have the particle in a box uh, solution. In region 2, we have potential energy is zero. So the solutions are of the form in region 2, f sine kx plus g cosine kx. Remember that this was the form of the solution for particle in a box. Uh, if you go back to our particle in a box solutions, uh, it's a constant times sine plus a constant times cosine. That's the general uh, form of the solution. So that's what we should keep here for the uh, for this region in region number two. And then uh, we have the boundary conditions. At x equals to zero, the solution that I have obtained in region one must be equal to the solution that I have obtained in region two. The function must be continuous. Its derivative must be continuous for a finite potential. So d psi one dx should be equal to the derivative d psi two dx. At the other end, at x equals to L, I should have the solution in region two matching the solution in region three, and the derivatives should match as well. d psi two dx must be equal to d psi 3 dx. The derivative must be continuous as well. So these are basically the boundary conditions. Okay. So for e greater than u, for e greater than u, uh, the particle is not trapped in this well. Uh, it can it can basically uh, move freely. The solutions will have the free particle form h e to the i c x plus k e to the minus i c x, where uh, c is equal to for unbound solutions two m e minus u over h bar squared square root. So that will be the unbound solution. So uh, here, remember, we have considered the bound states for e less than u. So for e less than u, we see that these solutions that satisfy these boundary conditions will have an exponential decay on the two sides on region one it's e to the cx on region 3, it's e to the minus cx. As x goes to minus infinity, this decays. As x goes to plus infinity, this decays. These exponential decays match the solution in the uh, inside the box so, so that we will have solutions of this form, oscillatory solutions that have exponential decays on the two sides. If you take psi square, absolute squared, then you will see that the probability uh, is non-zero, probability of penetrating this uh, finite barrier is non-zero. So this is very different from the classical result. Okay, so let's summarize what we did here. We considered a particle in a finite, well, uh, in a well of finite height. Classically, the particle is trapped inside for a total energy less than the potential energy. Quantum mechanically, it's not. When I write Schrodinger's equation, minus h bar square over 2m, second derivative with respect to x plus potential energy times psi is equal to total energy times psi. And by calling 2m u minus e parentheses divided by h bar square c square and writing the characteristic equation, I see that the solutions in region 1 and 3 have exponential decays. Exponential increase or decay, which one I should choose depends on uh, where I am. If x goes to infinity, solution goes to zero. 
this is satisfied by b e to the e minus c x. As x goes to minus infinity, the solution should go to zero. That is satisfied by a e to the c x. So uh, for region three, uh, the exponential decay e to the minus c x is acceptable. For region one, exponential decay e to the c x for x negative x is acceptable. In region two, we have particle in a box solutions. Uh, f sine kx plus g cosine kx and uh, writing the boundary conditions the wave function must be continuous the derivative must be continuous at the boundaries we see that we have an exponential decay and an oscillatory solution inside the box if e is greater than u then we have a free particle uh, the solutions are of the form h e to the i c x plus k e to the minus i c x uh, which are the of the same type ac actually uh, for particle in a box uh, case. Remember, this is a prime e to the i k x plus b prime e to the minus i k x. Except here we find that the, it's the real solution that's inside the box. So uh, with that, uh, this the value of c changes here. It's square root two m e minus u h bar square because e is greater than u. Other than that, the solution is basically a traveling wave solution inside the box. So it's h e to the i c x plus k e to the minus i c x, and it has an exponential decay, decaying tail on regions one and three.